how is everyone tonight? <laughs> um, a little impromptu, um, John's face blog tonight because I wasn't expecting to do one, but uh, but I got some messages through. Um, uh, one of which was actually from Lauren, um, who does the, um, the the Rory Gallagher, Rory Gallagher um, blog, R Rory rewritten. It's uh, it's an amazing thing to see. You know, such a comprehensive um, sort of uh, collection of um, of everything Rory Gallagher. Um, and she saw the post that I had put up um, last night with uh, with my portrait um, of Rory. And um, so, and then obviously I had some recollections of the uh, of the Rock the Lock, you know, uh, Bally Ronan uh, festival. Um, Back in 1989, whenever Rory Gallagher headlined it, um, Mama's Boys were on the bill. The very magnificently named uh, Dumpy's Rusty Nuts. <laughs> and there, um, I think there was a band on before us, but my, my band Emerald were on, you know, that on the on the same lineup. But uh, I, I I documented all that in in the post, so I'm not I'm not going to go into that. But what I would like to say to Lauren is, um, yeah, you know, I, I I will go into the um, the the experience of that day in 1989 in great depth for you um, to sort of give you a, an insight into everything that happened because it wasn't just about you know Vivian Campbell um, sort of standing in awe of uh, of, of Rory Gallagher, his hero. You know, there, there were a lot, a lot more uh, th things went on, quirky things as well. Um, but the main thing is, is uh, and uh, just before I go on, this is something that pr probably a lot of a lot of people don't know. But uh, I used to see Rory Gallagher all the time, all the time, like like, like nearly every week at times because I lived in Clarawood, and uh, and uh, uh, Rory's manager lived in Clarawood as well, uh, just this little estate in, uh, in East Belfast. Um, so I, I, would, I would see Rory um, pulling up and getting out of the car and going into his manager's house and then them go, going off and um, back then there was like a sort of a, a sort of a like a, a code as such whereby you, you wouldn't go and approach the guy, you know, he's up to do business and you know, um, or go off the player or whatever, so you wouldn't go over like a sort of a fan, <laughs> you know, and go, hey. plus, um, I, I, to tell you the truth, at the time, um, you know, I was going, wow, there's there's Rory Gallagher up at, the, up at his boss's um, house again, uh, I could see down from, because I lived in the flats, and I could see, <laughs> see them arriving, um, and it was great, you know, it's, it's, it's a lovely memory. Um, Memories that, uh, that a, a lot of other people don't have. Um, I was thinking back actually to <laughs> the, some of the memories that uh, that people in the music business would not have experienced even if they were in a band or, or even not in a band, you know? So uh, I was thinking about that because uh, I saw that the Wasp were doing this big sort of en end of the road thing or the, you know, I don't know, or was it the the third thirty fifth year anniversary of um, the Electric Circus or whatever, and um, the band that I played played in with uh, with Rory Gallagher, Emerald, um, with uh, Ian Speedo Wilson, Remy Haller, Stevie Prosser, and, and Julian. But before Julian joined the band, Davy Bates was was uh, was the drummer, and we supported Wasp in uh, in the Ulster Hall on that original um, Electric Circus tour. Um, and of course, like back then, like 1985, was it or whatever? I think it must have been around 1985, 1986 or whatever, maximum or whatever. You know, it was still like very early 20s or whatever. Um, and still a burgeoning um, musician, singer, didn't really know what to, um, you know, what the protocol was, you know, as, as far as, uh, playing with these big acts are concerned. So this was the first time that I actually did anything like so big. Um, and I had to go along and do like a, um, 
a sound check. And I'm going, what? What's a sound check? <laughs> I don't know what a sound check is. Well, do you know what a sound check is? Yeah, we've got to go along and do it anyway. So we were there at like 4 o'clock or whatever, 5 p.m. And our comrade in arms, Desi Cassidy, was um, he, he was he was more or less the guy. He looked after Emerald, you know. He 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 really did. Um, I love him the bits. Him and, and Margaret, um, not my Margaret, his Margaret, but I love my Margaret too. <laughs> but uh, but Margaret Cassidy and Desi Cassidy, Desi in the day was um, was never too far away from anything that was going on with Emerald. Um, so on this particular day, anyway, it was uh, Ulster Hall, uh, 4 p.m., us fledglings going along to support WASP, international American superstars. Uh, so it came to the time, they, they had already done their sound checks, so everything was all sorted out for them. Um, and we went on stage and set up you know, a 4 by 12 and the, the, the guitars and stuff and um, and then this guy came up, he was the sound, the sound man and he said, um, what sort of a sound would you like uh, tonight? And I looked at him and went, well a very good one please, <laughs> if there's any possibility of that. He says, no, you don't understand what sort of a sound do you want? And I went, well, we're a rock band. We're like, well, he said, no, 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 no. So I got this big nudge in the elbow and I can't remember who it was from, but uh, they said, I think he's looking, you know, for a few spondulics, you know. In other words, if you want a good sound, pay me. If you don't pay me, then you're going to get a bad sound. So Desi came over to me and uh, and he said to me, well, what's all that about? And I went, well, I'm led to believe that um, that, that guy over there, you know, he's, he's sort of in control of um, what way our night is going to go, you know, sort of thing. But I hung that any money I, and I've went over to Rumi and Speedo and, and, I mean, we will have money later on, but here, now, you know, n n none of us have got any money. And Desi went, leave it with me, everything's going to be fine. So he called the guy up on onto the side of the stage um, and then I saw him placing the um, you know the wedge or whatever it was into his hands and the guy going down and uh, doing the sound check um, I think I mean it, it was unusual back then but we um, we opened up with uh, with separate ways by <laughs> by journey <laughs> you know even a, a, as an original band Emerald but um, this big, huge sound came out all over. There was no one in at this stage. This was like an hour, one hour before um, the, the doors opened or whatever. Um, so it was this big, huge sound. And, and I was going, Desi must have given him like, I don't know, 20 quid or whatever, you know, like giving him enough to, you know, for him to ramp up the, the, uh, the the buttons on this on the sound desk so we w we went off happy anyway um I went up there changing room and then we went on to the gig and the gig was outstanding there was like a thousand people in the Ulster Hall and you know this was like back in the early 80s